Hey, we're going to show you a quick test now that we've got the um, secondary vacuum chamber uh, back together. We left the lid off for just a second just to make sure all the action works correctly. Um, turn it back around. Then we'll go over here to the butterfly. This is the main, obviously. Um, nothing spring loaded right now, so of course it's just going to flop around. But basically this right here is with the throttle closed. Uh, we open the throttle this way, of course. Uh, this is the uh, foreground is the driver's side of the car or the vehicle. And then um, with the primaries wide open, we test to make sure that we can have no binding on the secondary. And you can hear the vacuum action there. And then we'll just double check with the visual up top we sure are wide open there, of course, and no binding anywhere. And we're doing nice and really good. So um, it's important to remember to keep these the way that they ought to be. Um, double check too, sometimes that you could have on this um, right here, you could have a little bit of binding there as you come down. Uh, sometimes the linkage rod is prone to hit the base. Of course, you don't want that to happen um, under full throttle. But uh, important to check these things out as you're rebuilding these carburetors. All right, let's show you a couple of things here about this carburetor in particular that we're putting together. This is a ECK 9510, and this is a 55 model. Um, we went ahead and put the secondary diaphragm together and um, put that back into the, the body there, put a gasket between the body and um, the throttle body itself. And uh, we went ahead and put our butterflies back together, make sure that we've got good work on our shaft here, uh, both shafts, and th things are sealed up. We went ahead and put the... Um, small brass fitting that goes inside the orifice here for the spark control valve. Then the spark control valve, we also have uh, put together the choke lever mechanism. Remember, this is a 55, so the choke will actually be sitting on the intake, uh, as it would as well for a 54 Y block. Uh, went ahead and put in our idle mixture screws, and uh, we've put them all the way in uh, very gingerly. And then we backed them out one and a half turns each. Uh, we did put together a little bit of the linkage here just to get started on this. We put a grommet inside where the hot air tube should go. And then uh, we put our, our check balls back in here in the secondary chambers with brass fittings. We've got our O-rings here staked with our washers. And then we've also got new O-rings uh, inside our main feed for the fuel. So now we're ready to really begin uh, part two here. Now, before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and get together our uh, fitting that uh, feeds fuel in. We've got a new um, gasket here. We've got a very clean screen that fits on the nipple here. And then of course, this spring that goes inside. Don't forget this spring. You see that there's a cup here and that's to keep uh, tension uh, on that screen so that it will indeed stay up against that brass fitting and keep any debris from entering your fuel bowl or um, other parts of your carburetor as fuel is trying to enter. There's just a last ditch effort to catch anything that your filters didn't catch on the way in. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this secure, get this installed, and then we're going to work um, on the air horn and the fuel bowl. All right, back in the 50s, Ford did have some oddball sizes. Not that this is a necessarily a metric size, but it is 11 sixteenths um, wrench that you're going to need or socket to um, torque down your brass fitting here. You don't want to get too tight with that, but you want to be tight enough that it seals up against that gasket, okay? This is one place where if you've got a lot of fuel pressure, um, they are prone to leak there at that fitting. So you want to make sure that that's secure. 
All right, on your air horn, what I recommend that you do is that you um, go ahead and first um, attach your seal here. And um, I use that 3M weather strip gasket adhesive, okay? And the reason it would be best to do that is this will lay relatively flat on um, your workbench if you don't uh, put in your Venturi's here. Um, save those for later. Of course, if you want to put in, if you if you remove them, your um, choke plates, go ahead and do that. I put a just small light coating of oil uh, just on the edge of those there as they go back into the air horn itself. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that the choke plate that attaches to the choke lever um, is on that passenger side. Uh, that'd be important to remember. And then, of course, your Venturi's, save that for last after your seal is uh, secure and dry. And then you also want to put in those special screws uh, that really have like a wire keeper. Um, I would suggest that you take the wire and uh, just kind of right there, that thin uh, piece of the casting right there. Uh, that way, when you put this back into the throttle body, you won't have any issues uh, in fitment. All right, so basically, um, the air horn's kind of simplistic to fit on there. Uh, here with the choke lever, you want to make sure that it is indeed attached. Um, I can't do that with one hand. So, so basically, I'm going to go ahead and try to set this down. I don't have my um, tripod with me necessarily, but um, maybe I can real quick. And we'll just put this inside. Probably see where this um, where this goes there, the choke plate. There's a little pin there on the end of your choke lever. So you want to make sure that's fitting in there. And then, of course, uh, there's a locator pin and then for your air horn, and then that will just pop right into position here. Of course, you can double check things, make sure that the bores all line up, Venturi's and all of those things, and you'll be good to go. All right, here we have our float bowl. I've already installed the check ball and the retainer for the accelerator pump. And then of course, our two jets, these are size 50. Um, I think a lot of these just came with that jet size in 55 and 56. And then our power valve is there. And then we need to drop in our secondary um, nozzles. And then uh, of course, uh, get our float set and all of that. So we'll get that done. Most of that is quite simplistic. I don't think I need to go through all of that, but pretty much just involves dropping that into the hole here and just letting that slide right in. Not a problem there. And then uh, do not forget um, your new needle as well. That goes in there just like so. And uh, we'll get the rest of this buttoned up and then we'll show it to you before we uh, put it on the throttle body itself. One of the things I like to do, I like to use a very small O-ring um, to put here on the end of this um, pin that's going to slide through here and keep our fuel float in our bowl where it needs to be. And uh, this is just extra insurance against any seepage or anything that um, might not seal up too well. And uh, maybe not exactly 100% necessary, but uh, I do like the extra added insurance of it. And of course, make sure your float's set correctly. On these uh, float bowls, there is no setting uh, to turn this upside down like you would an Edelbrock or something of that nature. You're really just looking for the measurement here from the lip down. And uh, from what I understand, that's 5 sixteenths. And um, you may need more or less, of course, depending on what um, engine you're running and all this. But I, I don't think there's going to be much variation in that. And uh, some of these things always take a little bit of... Um, trial and error. Uh, that's why we're going to take our uh, fuel bowl uh, gasket and spray this with silicone so that it's uh, easily to be easy to be removed uh, for the future, just in case you need to make any adjustments or change the jets or the power valve or anything such as that. All right, if you were paying attention with the last little section here, um, needed to make sure that my 
feed tubes were in there and also my needle was placed in. Again, the nicer kits come with a new needle. Most kits do not come with um, uh, new feed tubes or new jets or a new power valve and all of that. But um, the Daytona kits are pretty nice. And uh, for the most part, you have what you need here. All right, basically, we're going to get our um, fuel bowl lid back together here. And this, of course, is for a 55 ECK model. I don't think you saw many of these in 56 unless there were holdovers. But um, the O-rings have been, uh, the washer's been staked here and uh, ready to go at the top. And, of course, uh, this is a 55, you can tell, because of the way that um, this is designed. Uh, like almost a 90-degree bend there. Uh, to go in the secondary feeds and boy i just saw something i don't like always make sure you check things out this is cracked hmm if you see right there well i'm glad i noticed it. you wouldn't notice it if unless you uh pull this apart but there's another reason why these things leak um you see that crack right in there Boy, probably just even more important that you inspect uh, inspect your parts and pieces here. You can tell that that is a chink in the armor there. So, boy, that would be a tremendous leak. Man, we're glad we saw that one. That one looks okay. I don't know how I missed that at the beginning, but uh, probably easy to do. All right, back to the work here while we try to find and uh, locate another set of secondary tubes or at least one to replace the, the bad one that we had. Um... Basically, Connemeyer's valve, there are two holes that are the same size that the feed tubes go through, and then one hole that's a little smaller, and uh, that's what the screw goes through. You can tell as uh, this is oriented here, uh, two larger holes at the bottom, the smaller one at the top where the boss is in the lid, and that's what we're going to assemble. All right, pretty much got a fuel bowl ready to go here. We've got both of the nozzles in, the needle, uh, float is set, jets, power valve, uh, check ball with an accelerator pump, and the retainer. Um, needle and seat, which in this case is that um, nicer float check that it has there from Daytona. And of course, the economizer valve. Make sure that you press down on this spring when you um, tighten down those three pieces of hardware so that it gives the opportunity for your diaphragm um, holes to line up. If not, you won't get any action there. And of course you need that uh, all according to vacuum there. Um, one thing about economizer valves, I will say this, this one's more cheaply made. You can tell it's got some rough cut edges around the holes that are drilled there. Didn't quite, I just tested it out. I saw it was a difference. It didn't quite fit too well. The one in the Daytona kit fits nicely and uh, it actually you can tell it's much, much better made. And then it also fits inside that lip. These cheaper ones don't. You'd have to work on that a little bit to get it to fit inside that lip. And that's very important because you do need an airtight seal. Um, next we'll do is um, we'll get the accelerator pump in position, uh, put some silicone on that just to lubricate a little bit. We'll also take our gasket, spray some silicone on that and uh, set that on top. And then we'll um, tighten these down. Something else to make mention of as you're going through uh, cores, be careful about these um, accelerator pump rods. Uh, these are hollow. They're very easy to uh, bend. And when you're trying to take one apart and you're trying to deal with parts that have frozen up over time because of corrosion, um, be careful that you don't bend this. And then, of course, if you got some cores lying around and you're just some of them not paying attention, um, you want to put one back in that's that's not bent and that uh, the shaft is straight. Um, easy check on that, obviously, is to put that through um, the board there, and it just ought to go through pretty freely um, in your fuel bowl um, as it slides up and down there. So uh, just a little nuance there with these carburetors. All right, uh, most of the time it's a whole lot easier to put that lid on um, after you've already got the fuel bowl secured to the throttle body and the air horn. Of course, there are three 
two large screws, one long one that goes up underneath of the throttle body to secure the fuel bowl. Then there's um, a little small one back here on the end, and there's another larger one, um, larger head anyway, up underneath. But um, the reason for this on the 55 with the lid is because of the way these tubes go. If you wait to do the lid at the very end, you'll be able to put the tubes into the lid first, you know, get them secure, and then go ahead and put the whole entire lid down with both tubes going into the O-rings. Um, so while that's happening, and I'm, while I'm waiting for another secondary tube to come in, we're going to go ahead and uh, work on the accelerator pump. Um, you see the spring-loaded mechanism here, your new seal, and then um, the spring that goes inside the shaft. And then the way that this works down here, um, you basically make a felt sandwich with the spring um, up above that. And this felt sandwich, of course the felt will hold the oil, it's basically gonna sit right there. And the spring right there, as that shaft slides up and down, the spring put a little bit of pressure on the washer, which squeezes the felt a little bit. And theoretically, it's supposed to oil that shaft every now and then. Um, so we'll put that back together and uh, send that back through. One other particular nuance of this carburetor is its fuel bowl lid. And uh, you see there right in the middle where that um, stud is going to go through and secure that uh, to your fuel bowl. and also give you a place for the uh, air cleaner. Uh, stud to go through to the carb as well. Um, in addition to making sure that your fuel bowl lid is uh, snug and not warped, um, use the large washer that's supposed to be there. Um, understand why um, this is open to the atmosphere. Um, with the air cleaner sitting there and you've you got an issue there with the um, the vacuum and the air being uh, rushed in, uh, turbulence, uh, air movement over top of this. Um, pretty sure, although it's not stated in any manual anywhere, that the reason for this washer um, is for that purpose, the movement of air there when the air cleaner is on, on top of the um, carburetor. Do be careful about your studs. Um, you know, sometimes uh, those of us that work on these carburetors, we try to get uh, two or three cores and um, put them together, but uh, make sure your stud is the correct stud for um, your lid. You can see there this lid here, um, how tall or how thick that boss is there. Um, this will secure and fit well in there and um, not bottom out, if you will. Say, so how did you figure that out? Well, uh, when I took apart another core, uh, there was already there was already a stud uh, in that core, and that stud was way too long. As a matter of fact, you take a look right here. Um, you can see these two stud about three eighths of an inch or, or so. Um, where this stud here on the left is uh, quite a bit longer, the shoulder and all that. Um, it bottomed out and still had three eighths of an inch left or so. Uh, maybe, maybe a quarter inch or so um, left between the top of the lid and uh, this washer would have been loose and wobbling it around. Uh, that would have been a mess. And uh, the way to keep these from warping, um, in my opinion, is to get your uh, stud secured first um, here and not doing, not over torquing it, but getting that secured first just so it's snug and then your four machine screws and you should be good to go. All right, once you have your um, secondary tubes in place, 
and uh, you let the fuel bowl down where it needs to be. For the 55, you want to make sure you use the washer and uh, the air cleaner stud. Highly suggest that um, when you torque this down, you torque down the middle and then do your four corners and go into crisscross fashion. Don't over torque this. See a lot of these uh, covers that have been warped over the years because guys just really um, went a little crazy on the torque. Uh, you really don't need that much. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the manual may call for even like five pounds per square inch here um, on the air cleaner stud. So um, just barely uh, get this snug down to the fuel bowl and you'll be good.